everybody and welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. I am Lena with Ape Tech Tutorials. Today we're going to be finishing part number two of our number game. So basically we're going to be able to add the functionality of shuffling the cards, shuffling the numbers, and be able to move on the next to the next sprite when we click on the correct card. So stick around if you guys want to learn how to do that. And like always, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and leave your comments below. Alright guys, here's our demo. So what we have done is we've basically created the ability to be able to shuffle the cards, not match, so that and also make sure that these two numbers do not match and move to the next card if the number is correct. So if I do this, you'll be hearing something like that. If I click here, I'll be happy and then we'll move to the next number. So as long as you click on the correct number, we'll be clicking to our next number. It will go forever. We don't have a stop. You guys are welcome to add that and make a counter. But just wanted to make sure you guys see that this is what we're going to be doing today. All right, so let's get to it. So the difficulty of this tutorial is medium size. It will take you about 25 minutes to make. It's way shorter than the first one. It's uh, it's not going to take you that long. Here are the skills you'll be learning. Uh, some of them we already used. So the first four we already used. The new one that you guys will be using is creating your own block. And we'll show you how to do that. And this will only take you four steps. Alright, so step number one. We're going to add some additional variables. And they're, as you see, listed right here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the first thing we have to do is go ahead and go inside our previous uh, game we were building. And we're going to go ahead and make a copy of it. And you'll know you have a copy because up here it will say whatever name you named it and then copy. And I like to always make a copy because I want to keep the original one in case I messed up with the first one. I, I want to be able to come back to a point where I was able to, to have it working. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and add our variables. So let's go ahead and do that. I will add a few and then I'm just going to fast forward to it. All right, so we've added all our variables here. Now let's go ahead and go to our stage. And in our stage, we're going to go ahead and add to set those variables. So we're going to initialize all those variables. I'm going to put them up here and we're going to put this one as negative 60 and the negative 60 here is basically right here this is the the car mi mix x that we wanted to start at when we're mixing those numbers here's this car step and then I'm going to set that one to a hundred so basically that's the distance between here and here. So we want a hundred between the two right here. If you make it bigger, it will make the space between them. It will push this guy farther this way. So I may, I put it at a hundred so it's relative close but not that close and they have this gap in between. I'm going to set the color. And the column is optional since it's one, and I'll tell you, show you why. But I made it so that if you guys want to add more cards, you're able to. So this number will change depending on how many cards you want to add. I just wanted to make it flexible for everybody to kind of do their own updates to this if they wanted to. Okay, and then we're going to set card number, I mean set X to... So now we're going to set what do we want these guys to be. We want to randomize them. And this is going to be a little confusing and complicated. But let me see if I can try to make it simple. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to pick a number between 0 and a number of our columns. Where's our columns? Columns. Max columns. There we go. So as you can see, this is a number between 0 and 1 because columns is 1. So depending on how big this number is so between between those two numbers 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply our step this guy by the random number and the reason we do this is to be able to add the space between all those cards so if we had more cards we would be able to add like some like here another space here another space on the other side and and I've used this before I used it in another tutorial where I did some uh, card matching game if you guys want to go check that one out that one's also a good one to reference and now we're going to add this random number to our to our max to our car mix x and that is going to be used to be to set this x we're going to use the same one for both x so we're going to duplicate it so we have two where is it right there and right there So basically what this does, it gives us a random number of for the x. And we just set that to the to the random number. Okay, I was making sure I got it all correct in the right order. It looks like I did. Alright, so that's how you set your variables. Step number two. We're going to go ahead and make sure that the numbers on front of those cards that are showing on the screen do not match each other. So basically, we don't want to have two fours or two fives or two eights show at the same time. And as you guys saw on our previous video, we did have that. So that's one of the bugs we're trying to fix. And we're going to be adding this code, but we're only going to be adding it to card number two. So this will help us. And this is where we're going to use our, our defined block. All right, for step number two, we're going to do this on cart, on the cart two. So make sure you guys are on cart two. Click on cart two and make sure you're there. So here we're going to add our own block right here. Go here where it says my blocks is pink dot and do a make a block. And name it what you want. I'm going to name it check number. Okay. And then we're going to use this guy right here. And then we're going to do a repeat until. Now in here, we're going to be checking. Because we're going to do, what we're going to do here is basically check to make sure that number one and number two are not equal to each other. Because if they're equal to each other, all we're going to do is randomize it again to bring it to the same number. So we're going to do a... Uh, where is that? Card 2. Equal to card 1. We're going to check if those two are equal. But we're going to not it. So if it's not equal, then we're going to get out of the loop. Here we go. Those two are not equal. Once those two are not equal, we'll get out of this repeating loop. And what we're going to do inside of there, we're just basically going to be uh, setting our uh, second number to a random number between 1 and 10. Because that's the numbers we have on our actual sprites. So this will allow us to get a num random number that is not equal to the first card. Because I've noticed that if I didn't do this, I was sometimes getting... Even though I randomize it, I will sometimes get exactly the same number. So this will allow for us to do that. But I don't want to run that all the time because it's just a waste of time, right? So what I want to do is add an if in here. That it will run only this code and only that code if those two numbers are equal. So the first time it runs it. It would run, make sure that if second number of the card is equal to the first number on the card, then it would run that special check number. So we pull this special block down here, in there, and then we close it. And there we have it. Just going to check for that. And let's see.
And right now it looks like a lot is going on, but we'll we'll show you at the end how to make sure you check that everything's okay. Step number three. Here we're going to uh, shuffle the cards. And as you can see, I've labeled what part goes with what. So this here is for card number two, these two sections here. And this is for card number one. So card number two are, is mainly going to have most of the changes and card number one is just going to have some set of a, a... All right, so now let's go ahead and move to step number three. We're going to go ahead and start with our, our second card since it's the one with the most work to do. We're going to go here and make a block again. And we're going to do a check X2. So basically what we're going to do here is check to make sure that our two cards are not on the, don't have the same X. Similar to what we did with the, with the top where we checked to see if the two numbers were equal. We're going to do a check to make sure that the random X position we get from one card to the other is not the same. Let me go ahead and build that for you guys. Repeat. And we're going to go ahead and use our nut. This guy. Nope. We're going to set equal, equal. Okay. Variable. If two is equal, but if they're not equal, if they're not equal, it's going to exit that loop, that repeating thing. And then there, we're going to go ahead and do our special randomizer that we had in our stage. That, the one with the convoluted logic in there. So we're going to be random, zero. I need to make sure I did that in the other one. Zero to max column. And then we're going to get a multiplier. This guy. So we're going to multiply that by car steps x. And we're going to be adding it. Oops. No, I always click on the wrong thing and it goes away. All right. There. And then we're going to be getting this guy right there. Let me make sure I check my logic so that everything looks correct. Uh huh. And then we're going to put it in here. Alright, so this is going to be setting our X's to make sure that the X's are not the same on both cards. And we're going to be checking on card 2 because that way the it won't, 2 will never be the same as 1. Now at the bottom, we're going to go ahead and add our check 2. And we're going to go ahead and set X. Mm, where is it? Where is it? Set X to R. Set X to. Okay. Now let's go to card number one. And this one's going to be an easy one. This one's just going to go ahead and. We're just going to go ahead and set the card to the X1. And put that in there. And we're going to set it to this X1. Alright. So let's check our logic. I don't want to see... Let's get rid of this, this. Number. No, I don't need those. I don't want to see that, that, or columns. Okay, so right here, this number that is here is the random number for your card. And this number here is what your card is going to be showing. So, and this is the number of your character and the sprites. So we want to make sure that the cards are going back and forth and flipping. Okay, so there's two and two. And as you saw that, the, the card did flip. Now we have it on this side. And there's a 10 on this side. 
three. So then ten moved over here, and the three stayed moved. So we're at, we can see that the cards are shuffling. I want to see if I can show you guys where we have two cards that are equal to the same, and how the logic changes them to be different. Let me see if we can do that. We can get it to do that. Yes, and today we will not show it. Oh, there it goes. So as you can see here, number one is the same as number two. And the first logic that we added was to make sure that if these two were equal, it would shuffle number card number two. So as you can see, it has changed the number of number two. So that shows you how it's correctly working to shuffle the number so that the two cards on the front should not show the same number. And finally, step number four, we're going to go ahead and move to the next sprite and cards if the user has clicked on the correct answer. So all of these will be added to our stage and I'll show you guys how to do that. So that's working. So now let's get to our final and last step, which is to go ahead and when we click on this card, It will move to the next to the next num set of numbers and characters. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're here in our stage. And I'm trying to make sure I can fit everything here for you guys to see. Okay. What we're going to be adding here, we're going to be adding a broadcast. And we're going to go under events. And we're going to add a broadcast that starts the game. And we're going to move this flag out of the way. We're going to put the start here. And under the flag, what we're going to do is we're going to call the start broadcast. So when the flag is clicked, I want you to run all this. Now, the way to take care of the logic of when the correct numbers click move to the next one is to add a start to here too. So we're going to add a broadcast start to when we click on the correct card. I wanted to do all this all over again and do the calls of the other broadcast. And we'll add it to both top and bottom here. And that's it guys. Now we have a full complete game. Let's try it out. So I clicked on the wrong one. I clicked on the right one. And sometimes they'll give you the same character, which is kind of weird, but it does that. And so just keep clicking, trying it out. And as you can see, it did shuffle the cards. It Since there's only two cards, it's always going to shuffle them however it feels is best. It's just random, so sometimes it will always land on the same area, and sometimes they will land on the other one. Alright guys, so that's it. You guys finally finished a game for counting. Uh, this is just to show you guys how you can randomize cars, how do you can randomize characters. And it can open a lot of opportunity for you guys to do any game or any activity you guys want to do on Scratch. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, like always, don't forget to like us, subscribe to our channel, and uh, join us on this adventure. See you guys on the next one.